What's up everyone, my name is Alex. I'm one of the co-founders of myinvestingclub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at myinvestingclub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up guys, it's Harry Haas here, and today I'm gonna to be kind of going over a simple dip and rip pattern that everyone can learn. Um, as always, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Um, this is not uh, you know, investment advice, even if it seems like it, education purposes only. Um, but yeah, um, I just thought that uh, um, you know I could talk about this pattern a little bit because it is something that I have been seeing occurring a lot lately. And I thought, like, instead of going over, um, you know, all my trades and stuff like that, I'm just going to go over this kind of pattern for this week because um, I think it is a, it's like a, a really big kind of pattern. Um, and so, yeah, let's just jump right into it. This type of pattern um, is something that, you know, you can uh, focus on a lot. Um, it's something that I've been seeing occur a lot. And, you know, it, I guess, you know, it's really something that um, is is more like a play it as you see a pattern. You know, you can't come into every single day saying, all right, I'm just going to play the dip and rip pattern. I'm just going to do this because I think that kind of mindset is a little bit toxic. And I think that kind of mindset, um, you know, we're, we're really just looking to kind of play line to line. Like we can't go into every single day expecting the stock, you know, to do this pattern. I think um, it's good to kind of learn multiple patterns. So when you when you learn first bounce, uh, you can kind of play it as you see it, right? You can you can say, okay, wow, I've identified a niche right here. Um, this is something that I need to. Um, there are people that do focus on like the low hanging fruit setup. That's something that's like, um, you know, a type of pattern that is usually kind of guaranteed to happen because on these day twos that are kind of broken and dead, we know that the odds are significantly in shorts favors. But for stuff like this, you know, this could spike all the way at the open and then you're like, oh my God, like I missed it. You know, I've, you know, maybe you're looking to play a first bounce on a scenario where it doesn't do something like this and it does something completely opposite. So this pattern is always kind of a play it as you see it one. You know, you can't be going into every single day saying, okay, I'm only going to focus on the dip and rip strategy because, you know, we might not get dip and rips for a week and you're trying to long every consolidation after a death candle and then you kind of get screwed, right? It's just like people who go into the market saying, all right, I'm only going to focus on first bounce. I'm only going to fo focus on first bounce. You know, what if what if first bounces don't come and this type of pattern comes around? So I think what everyone should do is I believe that, um, you know, this strategy is kind of, you know, it's not similar to the first bounce, but it's like if you have kind of a toolbox of patterns you've learned from watching the video, you know, um, it's just like kind of uh, a lot of things like, you know, there are some patterns that happen a lot more frequently than others. This is a pattern that I've been seeing has been more frequent in these type of market conditions. But again, you know, this pattern may not show up again. You know, what happens if we get a fade? What happens if we get a pop at the open, right? There are so many different scenarios that can occur. This is just one. Um, so if you've watched my first bounce videos, you know, don't just throw away first bounce every day, you know, actively be looking for a first bounce and actively be looking for other long patterns that I kind of talk about in my videos. You know, there was one pattern that I talked about a while ago where um, we kind of go up at the open, we consolidate on VWAP, and then we go higher. You know, that, that pattern happened with, uh, uh, I don't know, it started with an A and it happened on Thursday, but I remember watching that pattern and say, wow, that's straight out of my video, you know? But it's like, you need to kind of, I think you need to learn like maybe two or three patterns and say, okay, I know what the first bounce looks like, but you know, there's no first bounces today. So instead of just, you know, throwing in the towel and walking away, you can, you can kind of learn like multiple kind of long patterns and say, wow, this is the dip and rip straight out of Harry's video. You know, I, I've seen the pattern, I can identify it, you know, now I can trade it you know, or, or again, maybe the stock, you know, pops up and you're like, oh my gosh, wow. Like, you know, this, this is a, a great first bounce candidate. This is something that I'm going to take. 
or maybe uh, you've seen the the VWAP one again, where we watch you know the stock kind of come up, grind on VWAP, and then go higher. So all my videos, I think, are really really. It's important that you watch all of them and not just say because if you focus on one thing, I think a problem is, and when I read the DMs every single day, it's people just trying to focus on one thing. They're like, well, I watched your volume video and I saw that there was you know some volume kind of that dried up, so I took along there. I'm like, yeah, man, but this is right after a death candle. You know, the stock is dead now, and they're like, oh. Okay, you know, I understand. So I think having two, three, four, uh, you know, uh, things that are going your way for the trade is something that's really important. Like if you're like, okay, it's a hot chick, you know, just down dump to a crucial support level, it's holding, I think we can go higher. That's four things already that you have. That's four things instead of just saying, well, you know, I'm just going to long a dip, see what happens. You know, are we uptrending? Are we downtrending? Is there a death candle? You know, I see a lot of questions in Weekend Mentoring that are like, man, I saw a death candle and it recovered. I don't think the death candle strategy is a viable strategy. Well, it's like, man, you know, if you see a death candle recover, just stop out because, you know, like, you know, we talk about in Weekend Mentoring after the death candle, we're trying to short into pops and then risking high a day. Um, you know, that is something, you know, that like 90% of the time will work, but you're always going to get a percentage of the time that doesn't. And that's why we have risk management. So I think it's really important, like not to look for a sure thing every day. I think, you know, learning multiple patterns is really good. If you have a playbook of three patterns, I think that's really all you need. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at my investing club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. You know, there's a lot of people who are consistent with low hanging fruit doing the same thing every day. And that is, you know, perfect because we get the low hanging fruit pattern every single day. But as a long trader, you know, we're bombarded with multiple things every day on these hot chicks, right? We have stocks that go straight up and then dump. We have so many different scenarios. So I think longing is something where it has kind of turned into an art for me because I'm, I'm like, oh, wow, there's the dip and rip pattern. That's something that I like. And then I'm like, oh, wow, that's first bounce. So I think it's important to kind of watch m multiple videos, definitely get educated, um, and, you know, use, use my videos to say, okay, well, I put this and this and this together. Now I have a proper kind of playbook instead of just saying, oh, well, first bounce hasn't came for the week. I guess I'm not making any trades, right? You can learn something like this and at least you are having, you know, two patterns in your playbook. Now you watch another one of my videos. There you go. Three patterns in the playbook. You can back test, you can get better, you can watch on demand. So I really would kind of, if you're looking to get into longing or if you all are already long, I think it is really, really important that you kind of focus on trying to learn multiple things, multiple strategies, find what works for you, you know, always have a set risk, always stop out. But I think it is very, very important that you're kind of trying to learn multiple, multiple patterns because we have different things every single day that can make you successful. But anyway, that was just a little, little rant on kind of building a playbook, how to kind of do it. Um, so yeah, let's get into the criteria for this one. So obviously we have a pre-market. Uh, we have a pre-market push. We have some nice action, some nice uh, up, uptrend pre-market. The market opens at 930. We kind of get a dip down. We have, you know, the stock try and go higher. It's usually kind of a stuff move or a lot of anxious longs trying to get in, hoping that it goes higher, breaks this high. Usually it's like a whole number or a half dollar kind of up here. That's kind of what I usually find. Um, so we kind of get a stuff into that number and then we kind of go lower. What we're getting around this 945 ish area, or it could even be 935, you know, it's just kind of ish because there are, you know, different things that can happen at different times. Um, so we're kind of getting some consolidation right here. It's showing me that it can't break down, it can't break down. If the stock is a little bit under view at, that does not bother me. If this is a very, very big death candle, that bothers me. So we kind of want a slight pullback rather than a, a big, big death candle and a big, big panic. But again, that's why we kind of have this consolidation for a couple minutes to show us, okay, the stock is kind of starting to grind higher. Uh, it doesn't want to go lower. It's grinding higher. It's trapping shorts down here because you know the minute that this stock pops to an area like this, we have all longs chasing. We have all shorts pressing the buy button the odds for longing are significantly higher because you have all these shorts who are trapped, they're forced to cover, you have all these chaser longs, then combine it with a pumper, combine it with other things, and you have a really good case for a long trade. 
you know, I'm, I, I'm a fan of taking the strength while you can. So that's why I, I like to sell a little bit early on these. I like to sell, um, you know, when I like to sell into strength because the minute the strength goes away, we could be in for a big dump. Because remember, we have all these people who are chasing. When they finally see it start selling off, they get scared. They get anxious. They, they press sell. They're like, I'm already in the money. I, I'm just going to take it off here, right? So that's something that we need to remember. We need to think about everyone's motions. We have trapped shorts, number one. We have chaser longs, number two. And now we have pumpers. And usually, we're going to almost always have a pumper. And usually up here, when they see the stock start to go, they're like, all right, I'm in 20,000 shares or, you know, whatever they say. But, um, you know, that's also something that you want to be kind of aware of. So this is the kind of play-by-play. -play. Obviously, I've talked about this hot check or hot chick. You know, it's an uptrend. Uh, it's usually a lower float. Um, you know, don't don't chase within the first few minutes. Wait for a dip down to support. Um, wait for some consolidation so it doesn't dump. Uh, let shorts get trapped chasing the weakness. That that's something that is also because a lot of people who who are short and are usually shorting into this kind of support. I mean, at MIC we're always teaching to short into pops. You'll never hear me or Tosh or any of the mods talk about shorting into weakness. We always say wait for a pop, wait for a pop, and you know, kind of risk like into like kind of risk a little bit over that pop but on a hot chick and something like this you're going to hear some someone like Alex say you know this is an avoid to short in the first place because this stock is a, a hot chick and a stock that someone is really paying attention to right um so yeah and we're always looking to sell into strength so immediately when we're getting this big strength candle up I'm looking to sell because you know I've 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 already been you know corrected at least sell half you know pay yourself um, because you know this strength can go away easily and next thing you know you're getting a dump and you're back to break even and you're you're kicking yourself so that's why I'm always a big advocate of always selling into strength um, I think it works uh, really well it's just like you know covering into weakness when you're covering into a dump right um, so it's always something that I am always aware of I'm always in chat you know hit me up send me a DM and uh, maybe we could even you know talk about stuff like this thank you so much for watching our video if you want to see more of our videos please subscribe to our youtube channel by clicking the button here we do our best to post a new video every single day if you have any questions about mic or any general trading questions please text tosh using the number here also stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here